Um, I mean, you know, being here four years, I played in a lot of big games, so I think, you know, it's always been the same. You know, you just you just don't listen to it. You know, you just keep within within the team. Um, the coaches do a really good job of that because uh, we haven't even, we haven't even played our best yet. So, um, you know, we obviously have to play better um, in a big game. Um, so we have to focus on that and not so much what people are going to be talking about. Uh, so we're just going to handle our our preparation like we do, you know, every week. You know, how, much gonna, th- how much have you thought about Saturday being your last game at Ohio Stadium? I'm trying not to think about that because I mean, obviously, that's going to be emotional for me. Um, you know, I've really loved playing here. I've got to play in a lot of big games. You know, I've had a lot of fun. Um, you know, especially like the people that I've been around. That's that's probably been the best part. Um, and you know, it's, it's my last shot at it. I'm never going to get to come back here and play. Um, but I don't want to, you know, focus on that too much because, like I said, they'll be emotional for me, and I don't want to, you know, go and do a game being like emotional. I want to be able to focus on winning the game, and then, you know, afterwards I can be sad. What are you gonna miss most about this stadium? Um, I mean, it's just, it's just like home. Like that's that's what I'm gonna miss about it. You know, I've I've lived in Columbus for four years, and I, you know, growing up, I always wanted to to play here, and like, you know, that's that's our home stadium. That's just just kind of like symbolizes like what this whole place is about you know all those fans come in they, they pack the house and like I said the, the biggest thing for me is you know the, the people that I got to play with and you know my friends the coaches you know there's just great people around here and that just kind of symbolizes that for me and you don't want to be emotional but how will your parents handle that oh my mom my mom and dad are gonna be a mess and that's that's gonna <laughs> that's what's gonna be tough for me is you know I'm gonna go out there and you know I you know when I chose to come back for my senior year well, you know my dad he was like you know I want to be out there on the field for your senior day um, so I know they're you know they're looking forward to it but at the same time it's gonna be sad for them because I know they've they've loved watching me play um, but that that'll be the hardest part for me is seeing my parents because I I know they're gonna be crying Taylor you the fourth year seniors you were the first class that we're here for Urban Meyer and his staff mm-hmm. all the way through that you didn't have an adjustment from another coach or anything like that. What what did, have you seen sort of maybe watching Urban Meyer and the staff grow and figure things out here at Ohio State as you guys have done it along with them? You know what I mean? That I'm sure maybe the relationship when in 2012 was a little different than, yeah. than what it is now. Um, you know, obviously, you know, with those coaches coming in initially, they didn't know a lot of the players that were going to be playing for them. Um, they didn't recruit them. Um, so, you know, they I don't think they necessarily expected a ton of loyalty from them, but they, they were able to establish a culture. And there were, there were leaders from that group uh, that bought into it. And, you know, I think, you know, that first season, those older guys buying into the culture and becoming leaders and kind of carrying the torch of what this program's supposed to be about, um, that's been everything to our success because – you know, I come in as a younger guy, and I see, you know, these guys that played for Trestle and Fickle, but they're following the way Coach Meyer's doing it, and they're buying into it, and you know, they're enjoying it. Like, how could I not follow that? Being, you know, coming in as a freshman, not knowing what's going on. Um, so I think, you know, early on, you know, I don't think they were expecting a ton of loads. See, there was obviously speed bumps, but you know, they were able to establish a culture uh, that's just kind of permeated throughout the entire team. Um, and then throughout the years, you know, they've obviously been able to recruit the guys that they wanted and brought in their own guys. And, um, you know, it's just – it's definitely been a process, and you can definitely see the change because the, the culture's been established and they don't have to be as cutthroat with everybody. Hey, Taylor, is it kind of crazy thinking back that four years ago, at one point you might have been going through Notre Dame senior day? Yeah. Today, and just the idea that Ed Warner recruited you while he was at Notre Dame and just – you just talked about the – the influx of new coaches and things, but mm-hmm. that was the thing that gave you your chance and maybe made you the right fit to be here in this program to begin with. You're going to reflect about a little bit about just what it was like going through it, being a Notre Dame commit, you know, following Ed, and, and just kind of what you remember about the whole switch. Yeah, I mean, you know, my my big thing when I switched my commitment, it wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, Coach Warner coming here because you know I, I'd been talking to Coach Meyer before he even said that he had hired them. Um, you know, I wanted to come here. I just none of the coaches 
wanted me to come here. You know, I wanted to, but they didn't want me to. Um, so that that was the thing with that, and you know, just ironically enough, the people that I had the main main contact with at Notre Dame were both hired here. It was Coach Hen was my recruiting coach, and Coach Warner's the position coach there. Um, so it was just kind of like a perfect storm. Um, and then you know, Coach Meyer said, just you know, just give me one day, just come up here and visit one day, and if if you don't like it, I'll leave you alone. Just tell me you don't like it, I'll, I'll leave you alone. I won't bother you. You can go to Notre Dame. Um, so, you know, obviously I, I, I had always wanted to come here. But for me, kind of maintaining that commitment was kind of a loyalty thing, you know, because I'd, I'd said for eight months that I was going to go to that school. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, with that type of decision, you got to be selfish. So um, it's, it's worked out pretty well for me. You that day. Huh? You didn't need that day that Urban Meyer was offering you. No. Did. No, I didn't. But... I mean, you get to come up and visit Ohio State. Why not? <laughs> so how different and ironically, Jim Bowman is now on the last team that you'll be playing in the, in the horseshoe on the other sideline. What do you think about that? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I mean, he didn't want me either, so <laughs> hopefully we win. How different does it feel this week? How different does it feel this week? Finally getting the big games. I mean, this is this, these are the type of games you come here to play in, and um, I don't think you know we've we've nest necessarily been pushed to the limit really really been tested this will be a huge gauge for us going into the you know some the big games in the end of our season because this is the biggest game we've played so far yet this season um so i think it'll be a good gauge i think it'll be a test um you know for guys that have stepped into roles that haven't played in as big of games um, but I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see where we're at. And the pass protection was the issue against Illinois, and mm -hmm. you guys have resolved to get that fixed. How, how big an issue is it? How easily correctable is it? How serious a problem is it? Um, you know, I, you know, so like I talked about it with Chase after the game, I think you know an issue with him is just his confidence. Um, you know, there's at times in practice he looks great. He's he's a really good athlete, and you know he's fast. And but I just think sometimes he gets in the games and he overthinks it. Um, you know, I've talked to him, and you know, he'll he'll say, "Oh, I thought this was going to happen," but you know, you, you don't have to overcomplicate it. Just you know, block the guy. You know, do practice what practice, do what you practice. You know, take your set, punch, and you know, I know uh, against Minnesota, you know, uh, Theron Cochran, he's a pretty good defensive end, and Chase did a pretty good job against him. Um, and I think he wasn't he wasn't overthinking it, but the, you know, I think he has a bad play, you know, early in the game, and it just kind of consumes him. Um, but you know, we, we can change up some things we do protection-wise. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to say what we're going to do, obviously, because um, we haven't played the game yet. But um, you know, I just, I just think it's just a confidence thing. When, when, you, it, it, when you watched the tape, I mean, I'm sure it was more than just Chase. Um, was there like, how, was it like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened? Um, I mean, kind of. I mean, they. They obviously were trying to cancel out all the inside gaps because JT being, you know, a shorter quarterback, he doesn't throw over us. Cardell can throw over us, but JT, you know, he needs he needs his windows to throw to. You know, um, I was talking to him the other day. He says he, he'll never even try to throw over us because he just can't see. Um, and they were rushing their ends inside a lot, and we kind of knew that going into the game that they were going to do that because we'd seen that on film. Um, but, you know, when you squeeze down and you cover up those guys, you can't – we let him push back on the quarterback's lap, and I think JT Hook took a hit early in the game, and you know, you know, you get hit from the back, you're going to be kind of skittish the whole game. Um, so I think early on we need to protect him, give him time, allow him to complete some throws, kind of get in the rhythm, um, and then I think I think we'll be fine. What uh, stands out about their defensive front? Obviously, you know, Calhoun's. I mean, they're they're obviously really athletic. Um, you know, Calhoun's. You know he's he's a he's a big dude, but at the same time he, he has a good get off. Um, you know he'll go inside, he'll go outside, he'll bull rush, he'll go with his hands. You know he'll, he'll pretty much do anything. Um, and then I know they they slid a a three technique out to their other defensive end, so he's like 305 at defensive end, which we haven't seen a DN that big uh, so far this year. Um, you know obviously not as quick of a guy, but big powerful guy. And then uh, McDowell, I think he's probably one of the best defensive tackles we'll see all year. Um, you know, same thing. He's like a, a big, tall guy, but you know, he looks really good on film. Um, so you know, top to bottom. Uh, you know, I, I know I said when we were playing Penn State that was going to be the best D line we played so far this year, and you know, I think Michigan State, not to take anything away from Penn State, but is is a step above them. Um, 
and I think that's a, a big strength of their defense is their front seven. Taylor, Taylor, was there a moment in the second half or, or in halftime or going into the second half where, you know, the coaches or somebody turned to you guys and said, look, you know, we're going to shove it down our throat. We're going to run the ball. We're going to run Zeke. Uh, we're going to – I mean, you obviously have that one drive. He had seven carries out of 11 plays, four mm -hmm. five in a row and stuff. And does that stuff ever get said? And number two, what did it feel like to just go down the field, you know, push come to shove, y'all leaned on you guys and Zeke mm -hmm. and y'all got it done. What what does that do, I guess, for an offense? And what does it tell you about Zeke from a toughness standpoint, et cetera? Um, I mean, well, one, we, we are like the, the line every game. I asked Coach Warner if we can do that. Yeah. Because when you see the, dr the drives where we go straight down the field, it's just, you know, tight zone, a gap power, stuff like that. It's yeah. really basic plays, you know, but it's what we're good at. Um, and, you know, we're calling for that along with tempo all the time. You know, so I think the drive you're, you're talking about, we, we just ran tight zone with tempo. Yeah. And it works, it works great. Um, because even if they know we're going to do it, you know, I feel like we have good enough players that we can just kind of assert our will and do what we want to. Um, and then, you know, Zeke, obviously. Yeah, you've got to have a tough I running mean, yeah. back, though, to do that, right? I mean, I mean, he's, yeah. I mean, he, he can do it all. You know, he can, he can put the pads down, knock people over, he can run around them. You know, he can juke them, he can do it all. And he's, he's just a tough kid. You know, he's, he's not going to come out of the game. And it's, it's not a selfish thing, but, you know, we, we need him to run the ball to win. Tell me, you know? Alfred said today, I think, I'm, I may be uh, misquoting him a little bit, but, but he might be the best player in the country or best running back in the country. I mean, do you see, when you watch Zeke, do you see that level of player? Without a doubt. Yeah. And why? What, 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 why? I mean, I just think, you know, like I said before, he's just incredibly complete. Um, he's he's really fast. He's strong, so he can run people over, and he's got great agility. You know, he can, he can cut. And he makes great cuts. You know, I think we've seen him do all those things, you know, mm -hmm. throughout his career here. Um, and, you know, last year he didn't it so much get to catch it out of the backfield because of the wrist thing. Uh, but, you know, now he's catching more passes out of the backfield, and he's shown that he's capable there. Um, but I think the, the huge thing that separates him more than anybody is the way he plays without the ball in his hands. Him with the ball in his, in his hands and not in his hands is the exact same. He's going full speed 100%, and, you know, nobody wants to take a hit from him. You know, there's times on film where you, you'll literally see people just run away, you know, because he, he has to throw some devastating blocks. Um, so I, without a doubt, would agree with that. Taylor, As an he offensive was, lineman, he was you... assigned. Go ahead. As an offensive lineman, can you kind of appreciate what uh, Bosa is dealing with when he's got two and three guys, you know, trying to take him on and just the, the challenge that he faces? Can I appreciate that? Yeah, like just knowing what he's facing, you know, being an offensive lineman and what it's like when y'all double and double team someone. You know, I mean, I don't know if I can appreciate that because I'm always it's just like one on one. So. Yeah. I mean, I feel for him. I yeah. feel for him because, I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to have to go against three people. Um, and I've never been asked to do that. Uh, but there was actually a play on film Coach showed where they had a tight end tackle and a running back block him. And at the end of the play, he was he was still on the tackle. Um, you know, his stats don't necessarily reflect as well as they did last year. But I think he's a better player than he was last year. Um, and they're asking him to – kind of be selfless and do some things um, for the defense that don't necessarily get him the stats, and he's okay with that. Because at the end of the day, you watch the film, he's affecting the game. You know, he's probably been one of the defensive players of the game every single game. Um, and the fact that they have to take three guys to block one, you know, then, then they're, they're eight on ten for the rest of the defense. And you know, I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but I think we got some, some good players on the rest of our defense too. Taylor, Ezekiel Elliott was – assigned your guys' workout group so that he could absorb the offensive line culture. Mm -hmm. Is that a process? Did you have to break him in a little bit? Um, you know, I think, you know, going into the offseason early, you know, he'd obviously had a, got a lot of media attention and things like that. You know, and it's not like it, like, consumed him. You know, he, it, well, he wasn't really an issue at all. Um, but you could tell that, you know, he, he obviously got a ton of attention. Um, and I think Coach Mick kind of wanted to put him – with us because we just kind of have a you know a blue collar attitude and work ethic and you know linemen just just because we're bigger guys we're gonna like the weight room because we, you know you're strong um, and he, you know he put us put him with us because you know him lifting with us is gonna be different than him lifting with you know another running back or some receivers or something like that or linebackers um, and I don't I don't think he was he was ever gonna quit on us especially you know because we have a good relationship with him and. Just, 
you know, like I said, we're just we're stronger. So, but even even with that being said, we're still gonna hold him to the same you know level of you know whatever we're doing. But I could never run with him though. So plus, you apparently guys taught him some blocking techniques, huh? Oh, I didn't really teach him any blocking techniques. I mean, he's he's just always been that way. Um, but he should have been a lineman. With his ascent into the, uh, you know, with his climb now this year into the record books, I mean, have you noticed kind of a, a different level of intensity? And what's it been like to block for him on his way, you know, moving up possibly even into second place when it's all said and done? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it a million times. Zeke's always been the same guy. You know, nothing's ever changed with him. Since day one he came in here, you know, his first play carrying the ball, you, you know, you just thought, whoa, you know, this kid's going to be somebody. Um, so, you know, people always ask, you know, what, what has changed with him? What has changed with him? Like, nothing. He's, he's always been the same guy. So, um, you know, he, he deserves to be up there in the record books. Does that change your guys' like maybe offensive mindset as an offensive line, though? You know, I mean, to want to maybe get out there, hit a little bit harder, block a little bit more. I mean, I know that may sound a little stupid, you know, but. No, not really. I mean, I know it. it, it, it be, I think it'd probably be, you know, cooler for a story if I said, yeah, but it just. No added incentive for you guys. It's just. I mean, I I want him to do well, but I've always wanted him to do well, and I've always wanted to go knock people out. Um, and I, that's that's just that's football. Um, you know, all those all the records and everything. You know, that just that just comes with how we do things, and Doug, just hasn't changed. Taylor, with what you were Thanks. talking about earlier, with the tempo that you guys you would like to run and the, the run plays that are effective, you yeah. are always asking to do. Yeah. If you feel like that works when you do that, right? Mm -hmm. like, why do you – could you do that all the time? Um, running the ball, yeah. Tempo, get a little tired. There's a limit to that? I mean, you know, you know, you run five or six tempo plays where you're getting up, lining up as fast as you can. Like, you're just going to get tired and, you know, the running back's going to get tired. Um, so I think you got to do it in spurts to kind of catch them off guard. Um, you know, I think you can you can run your offense fast, but you know the way we do up tempo, you know, right when right when the uh, official calls it live for play, we're snapping it, um, and a lot of times the defenses aren't even ready and they just have to go to a base vanilla defense. But um, you know, you, you can't do it all the time because one, you know, we're gonna have to throw some passes here and there, and you know, other things along that nature, and we just don't have every play in our offense. Uh, like schemed or signaled for for an up tempo, uh, so I think it's a thing you use in spurts just to change up. And, and last year, um, we know how well you guys played in the playoff, but the game at Michigan State last year, how much was that a launching point? How much was that maybe as well as you guys played? Like I know Pat was saying, we're watching some film of that. When you think about the Michigan State game last year, are you is that something to aspire to to play the way you guys played against them last year? Yeah, I mean, I think we did like we. That is one of the better games we played last year for sure, um, and I think we we were just so determined to to just show how good we were, um, and, and it, on the field, you know, we sh we showed that product, uh, and I think it was kind of a launching pad for us and, and nationally, and, and everybody was like, okay, now now these guys are for real because. You know that's that's that team's good. You know they've always been good uh, recently, so it's just going to be a good gauge for us. And I think if we perform well, it'll kind of um, you know show everybody that we're for real. Because obviously people question you know how good we really are. Um, so it's it's going to be exciting, and I'm you know I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited to see how good we really are. Are you surprised to be sitting here, 30 game uh, intra? Uh, intra conference win streak, 23 game win streak, and longest in the nation. And that people are questioning how good y'all are. I mean, yeah. You know, and, and, and is that uh, <laughs> is that legit that they should be questioning a little bit? Because have y'all played? You know, take the record game out of it. Have y'all had that game in your opinion? No, I don't think we've played our best, but um, I mean, we we win. Yeah. You know, people were talking. You know. You know, team, take Utah for example. You know, they were num people had them saying they were going to be the number one team in the country, um, and they were playing great. They were playing great, but you know, they they, lo they lost. You know, they've they've lost games, and we haven't lost a game. You know, I think you win by one, you win by a hundred, you you still win. 
Um, you don't have. You just have to be the best team in the stadium. That day. you don't have to be the best team in the country every day. And you know we haven't been the best team in the country every single every day, every day. And we haven't played our best, but you know we we win. And, you know there's there's other teams across the country. You know they're not blowing everybody out. Um, but I think our best football has yet to be played.